I know people say this all the time. Uh, like, uh, of course, like I'm gonna say this, but truly, like, like God's real. You know, Jesus is real. You can have a relationship with Him. Um, and if you feel like you can't because of something the church did to you, um, like I'm sorry. On behalf of all Christians everywhere, I apologize for that. But there, there is freedom truly found in in the Lord. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Living Out Loud, where we're living out loud for the one who died for us. My name is LJ, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. We have weekly conversations on God, faith, and living like Christ. Today, I have my boy, Eric Taylor, joining us. And if you don't know who he is, he's a spoken word artist who uses his talent, his, he uses his talent to bring glory to God and to encourage others. He's also a student at Regent University where he's studying psychology with a concentration in marriage counseling. So your boy is a man of many talents. Eric's poems tackle many issues uh, that we all go through, including doubt, our need for God bondages even more. I mean, he's got an amazing, amazing stuff out there. So today we have the honor to talk about his upcoming piece called Try My God and the inspiration behind it. So family, let's welcome Eric Taylor. What's up? So yeah, um, so try my God, uh, kind of like what it's about and like my inspiration behind it and stuff. Um, so it's about church hurt, um, and I think church hurt's a huge topic in the in the church world that we kind of tend to shy away from. Mm. Um, and I think out of all the conversations that I've had with my unbeliever like friends yeah. and people who just are just unbelievers, a lot of it honestly comes from they've been hurt by the church or they know somebody that's been hurt by the church. Um, and I think a lot of times there's this connection between uh, a church um, doing something wrong um, mm -hmm. or a church like mistreating somebody and then them connecting that to God, their faith and just, Ooh. well, if this church is, if church, if churches can do, do this for me, then that's what God is. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the inspiration, I guess, uh, just, how many people I've talked to, like almost all of the unbelievers, like yeah. it, it, it's because of churches. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a really good point that you made. You know, like some people will equate like uh, the church, the body of people, you know, to God. And it's like, no, like the, the, the church is full of people and we're all flawed, you know, like we all have yeah. things that we are going through as well. And so, you know, like if, if somebody does uh, hurt you, like you can't you can't give up on God because of somebody else, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. was, that's really good. Um, I'm really glad that you're tackling this topic on uh, church hurt. What are like the first four words that come to your mind when you hear church hurt and why? Um, I would say, uh, I would say taking advantage. Um, like that was like a big thing, like taking advantage. Uh -huh. Um, I would say, um, got judgment um i would say uh judging and then i would say um like like scandal uh and like uh gossip for sure okay. um I, I think a lot of i think a lot of like church hurt like and in the piece i'm gonna kind of i kind of encompass like all spectrums of it in a way where it's like mm. some people are like where they judged me um or they were a part of a church for a long time and then a scandal happened mm -hmm. and they were like wow if i can't trust this church then i can't trust god mm. um and um so i just think there's so it, it, it's so broad of a topic um and i would also like to say i think uh, there's a lot of churches that i've been to um that are amazing yeah. um you know like i think churches are super of course super necessary um, to have, but I, I just think that uh, we've kind of gotten into this um, this habit in the Christian community where I think there's a lack of uh, accountability with each other oh, and, wow. inside the church. Um, and I think it only takes you know one bad apple, yeah, uh, you know, to ruin it for a lot of people. So I, um, yeah. So to answer your question, I would say that those are some things that come to my mind initially when I think about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
let's let's break down uh each one the first one was uh taking advantage have you ever seen that firsthand or like ever experienced that or seen somebody go through that in the church yeah yeah i, I think i think when it comes to something like i think when it comes to something like when somebody has a gift mm. um let's say you know like me for example yeah. like the spoken word and stuff like it, it's a it's a weird line because it's like um I want to, I want to have relationship inside the church and I want to, I want to feel like value, um, you know, and it, it's weird to find that because I think that line, because I think some churches will look at somebody who's maybe a, a very talented worship singer also. Yeah. And it's like, and you know, they, they can just use them and, and really, um, and really make them feel like super underappreciated. And you, mm. and you know, before you, before you long, you realize that you've been taken advantage of. Um, and I think church hurt and in that setting being taken advantage of is so uh, harmful to you because a lot of people, I think, attach their faith mm. or their faith to whatever church they go to. So like, or attach their relationship with God to their relationship with the church. Um, so, and then I would say with, with gossip, uh, you know, there, there's <laughs> some churches, you know, you got, you got a little community in there and it's, and it's so easy to, I think, have this holier than thou mentality. Yeah. Um, and I, I think there's, um, I think sometimes, um, unknowingly and maybe it's, and it's hard not to create a hierarchy inside a church. Um, mm. and I think, you know, sometimes there's like there's levels where certain people may look down on you and certain people may feel entitled and, yeah, yeah. you know, they may, they may hear about your testimony and it's like, Oh, that's the person that did this. And yeah. I, I, I think, um, which is also like a huge one. I think people experience a lot of times, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, so yeah, I think that, and I think the scandal stuff, I, I think it's in this, like in this day and age that we're in right now with like social media, um, like a lot of churches, there's a lot of pastors that have, I think, reached a celebrity status. Um, and I know that, and I don't think there's necessarily something wrong with anything wrong with that, but I think it, it provides more of an opportunity for the enemy to kind of come in and, and, uh, you know, um, ruin that for some people. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people watch, certain pastors that are like big and mm -hmm. in place of even going to a church. Um, they watch, <laughs> they just tune into like other churches. <laughs> and I think, uh, and I think it only takes one mistake from a pastor now, you know, right. for everybody to start being like, you know, wow, like I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were this pastor. Well, yeah. you know, well, well, not perfect. So exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. Yo, no, like that, that's so true. And that's so real. Cause like, I mean, I even feel pressure, um, you know, talking to people and, um, they're like, oh, you would, you, you think that aren't you like a Christian? I'm like, yo, like I'm, I'm still a man, you know, like yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. still, I'm still yeah. going to bump my head. I'm still going to have like these, these thoughts, um, from time to time, but it's just, um, as a Christian, I can put them under the submission of Jesus Christ. That's that's the difference yeah. here. So yeah, it's just you know, there's like there's like no level of grace when it comes to like um the world in in um yeah. church. Just like one mistake and you're out. <laughs> yeah. One mistake yeah. and you're out. So I'm like, yo, I can't even be human. I'm not superhuman. If I could, yeah. I would, <laughs> but I'm not superhuman. <laughs> Um, dude, you know, you know, you're talking a lot about, you know, the church and stuff, your experiences in it. So, um, have you grew, grown up in the church? Um, I actually haven't. I, I wouldn't say that I was like, I had a serious relationship with God until I came to region like a, like a year and a half ago. Wow. Um, like I, I kind of would have considered myself a Christian. I, I, I just never really went to church. And, mm. uh, but when I got here, like I, I experienced like, you know, what like uh like worship and like yeah. and like uh um 
and like some powerful like messages from preachers and stuff like that and i was like whoa and it just shifted my perspective completely on what it all was and um i think there's a certain point you know as a christian and like people say they're christian and it's like <laughs> if you take the time to think about it it's like do you believe what it mm. says and everything that comes with it and i, I think it wasn't until so, honestly it, it's Honestly, like it hasn't been that long since I'm like, man, I don't hundred percent believe this. Like yeah. it's probably been like a year or so since I'm like I'm completely on board with like everything that comes with like mm-hmm. the Bible and um like I believe you can have a relationship with God. I believe, you know, like um the Holy Spirit is a is not really talked about too much in some places, yeah. but I think the Holy Spirit can give you like discernment and oh, just yeah. so many different things. Um, so yeah, yeah, and I, I go to a really good church. Um, down, I, I found a really good church, like literally a couple minutes off off campus, yeah. um, called New Life. And uh, they have like the pastor there is like really helped me like find what a relationship looks like. Um, so yeah, yo, that's that's awesome. Yo, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we all have to, there there comes a time where we have to make the decision, like, you know, like, I actually want to have a relationship with Christ and with yeah. God. So, um, you know, and we were talking a little earlier, like, you're 21 and, you know, like, I know people, I'm only 24, but, you know, um, yeah. I just wish, you know, like, I was a little bit more bold in those things when I was 21. And, um, like, I, w- I was still, like, just finding my voice at, like, 19 to 21 so like to see to see and hear you like talk so boldly about this stuff is awesome. Um, you know, how when was that moment where you were just like, you know what, God, I'm deciding now, like I'm really gonna live for you. Well, I think honestly a lot of it a lot of it came um a lot of it came from from doing spoken word. Um I think like well, I think from when I started a couple of years ago, like, uh, and I started doing like open mics and stuff like that, I, um, I knew that I wasn't really, all my stuff wasn't about like, um, like Christian, it wasn't really yeah. Christian, you know, it, it was about like topics and stuff, but, mm. and it talked about God, but it wasn't really like that, that was the focus. Mm. And then when I decided I wanted to make that the focus of my stuff, I started praying over my pieces. Mm. And when I started pr- praying over my pieces, like, um, and I started doing stuff and like, I got more opportunities and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, I remember somebody said something to me specifically about something like after I got done or whatever, and it really opened my eyes. I was like, dad, I think, you know, the Lord's trying to do something, you know, in my life with this. And I really like, and at this time, I, I, I think I was still holding on to like, like, uh, my past life. And, you know, like me before, like I completely cut loose of all my, you know, like old habits and stuff and yeah. hanging out with certain people. And, yeah. um, and I was like, am I going to be serious about this or not? You know, um, I knew I, I knew I believed it. And I was like, it was like, am I going to be serious about this? Am I going to? Because I think the Lord is trying to use me. Mm-hmm. Um, and but the Lord can't use me if I keep you know, going back and forth, I'm I'm lukewarm, and, uh, so I was like, it's it's a commitment, or it's not one, you know, um, go all in, or don't go at all, so I was just like, I'm gonna go all in, um, and there's a couple other stuff that I honestly, like, just doing that, and seeing, like, like, because I I struggle sometimes, like, uh, of course, you, your biggest critic, so, like, I struggle sometimes with, like, uh, you know, oh, you know, it's not that good, or I messed up, or something. And um, but people's reactions, I was like, wow, like, mm. like I think the Lord's like really trying to use me, and I think that's when I kind of came to like a realization, like I need to get myself right with the Lord. I yeah. need to completely go all in. Um, and uh, so yeah, I think that was probably one of the major things that was like that happened while I was like. Yeah, I need to, I need to completely go all in, so. Woo! Eric is coming with the fire. I know that you're enjoying this. Hey, if you're getting anything out of this, 
please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're new here. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the podcast, we have conversations every single week on God, faith, and living like Christ. And I would love for you to be a part of the community. What would be your advice if somebody was going through church hurt? Let me know in the comments. Maybe we could conversate about that. If you want to get connected to me even more personally, my Instagram is at its underscore L-J-A-Y-Y. You can uh, tag me in your stories. Please let me know that you're watching. I know that people are enjoying this, but you know, I want to add more people to the community and I want to get this uh, good news, this gospel to as many people as possible for the glory of God. Yo, I know that I'm yapping your head off right now. Let's get back to the conversation. Awesome, man. I have another just random question, but like, um, yeah, yeah. Your your Instagram name is like Sunny and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. You've always been Sunny. Um, so what exactly yeah. does that mean? Um, so that's uh, wow, that's a that's a throwback uh, <laughs> the story because uh, I've had the name, uh, I've had that name since freshman year of high school, um, and I was, um. I was doing my first week of uh, wrestling practice. I wrestled in high school. And it was supposed to be, like, super tough, you know. Um, And they were trying to make us, like, quit and not want to come back, you know, for the first week. Mm -hmm. And and the whole time I was just just smiling, you know. I just (laughs) – I I was just chilling. And the coach – my coach (laughs) called me Sunshine. And – I, I, it stuck so much. Everybody in the school, my teachers called me that. Wow. And then, um, they said it at my graduation in place of my name. Wow. Um, yeah. And it, it, it then it kind of morphed into Sunny. Um, and then when I started doing like open mics and stuff, I was like, well, I'm not going to put down, I'm not going to put down Eric, you know, <laughs> like Sunny is more of a, you know, more kind of a, a stage name, better stage name than Eric. Um, so yeah, and it's just kind of stuck, honestly. Yo, <laughs> you were in the wrestling, <laughs> wrestling <laughs> practice, smiling. I know they were mad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know they were mad. Okay, let's go back to uh, uh, church herd, though. Um, have you ever experienced that yourself, and how did you get through that? Um. Yeah. So. I think before I came to Regent and I was trying to find, like, I, I was still, like, I, like I said, like, I was still kind of Christian, you know, didn't really know what that looked like. Mm-hmm. I, I bumped in and, and met this guy uh, who was, like, a leader at, like, a local church, and he wanted to take me under his wing and stuff like that, and um, and it, it just, it was this whole situation where I, I, I think he promised me a lot of stuff. I don't think he was a bad guy. I just yeah. think that he was busy and mm. I think he pro- he promised me a lot of stuff. Um, and, you know, I, I shared a lot of my testimony with him and a lot about myself. And then uh, he kind of just cut off all communication. Um, wow. Like he just kind of stopped talking to me. Um, and I had like shared so much about him, mm. uh, about myself and um i had shared with him that's when i first started writing like my pieces and he told me he thought it was good and how he wanted to use it and and then you know then after i think a couple months of us like meeting up and talking um it it was just he kind of just lost the communication and we just never talked again and it it really really at that point i honestly was like well, almost like stopped writing. I, I was really hurt because yeah. I had shared a lot about myself and um, made myself pretty like vulnerable, you mm-hmm. know. And um, and so then it came in. A, it made it a question of like my identity. Like, was it something about me? And wow. like, um, and so yeah. And I connected that with um, my faith and god and i was like you know well if this church leader is just going to do this to me then you know then you know maybe the lord doesn't want to hear from me either Mm. you know that that was kind of the connection that i made um and i think how i got through it um was i got around i got um i met somebody new who's kind of older and kind of mentored me and kind of um uh, kind of also replaced what I thought he was going to be mm-hmm. and uh, um, made me feel a little less 
I guess helped me get over that a little bit. And uh, and then also like just understanding and coming to the understanding that the Lord, um, like people are flawed and yeah. like, you know, and if you put your, if you put your faith in, um, if you put your faith in people and you put all these expectations in people, they're going to let you down. Come on. Um, and if you put your identity in, in other people and, and uh, what they, their opinions and stuff, you know, they, they're going to let you down eventually and understanding that, you know, God loves me yeah. and, you know, I can, I can pray whenever I want to. I can go to him whenever I want to mm. and uh, I don't have to prove anything um, to him. Come on. Yeah. Um, and I think just understanding that, um, and I think like with the peace, like it's, um, uh, it's, I'm planning on it being a, a, a spoke, like part spoken word and a partially like a worship song. Wow. Um, so like the spoken word aspect of it is going to, is going to kind of break down like church hurt. Yeah. And then the song part of it is just going to be like whoa this is this is my god kind of like redemption like the redemptive part like oh, like um, yeah okay. kind of like how you know i i think people like how i said in the beginning people connect like so if they're judgmental then god must be judgmental right it's not true like you know my Whew. so pretty much like my god you know the god that i serve he, he loves you um he'll meet you at your weakest places and i i think kind of like putting the two side by side um like apologizing for all of this um for how you've been hurt and then yeah. bringing it into like it's kind of an invitation like try my god like my yeah. god you know um is not that so it's not the god of church hurt um so yeah Dude, that is so good um uh, do you have like a set date of when this is supposed to be out um, not yet. Um, I, I know sometime in July though. Okay. Yo, keep me posted because I want to, yeah. I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear sure. it. Most definitely. Can you give us like a line, like your favorite line? If you have a favorite line. Uh, gosh. <laughs> I, have the, I have this one line. I have this one line, uh, where because it's kind of like an open letter i started as an open letter like um to the people who have overcome or overcoming or will have to overcome church hurt and then um i say i'm sorry um and then kind of i make it this theme of like their god yeah um like i'm sorry for what their god did to you um Oof. and i think my, my, my first line is uh um one of my first like lines is like I'm sorry that their God was the vending machine to your dollar. And I said that he's, cause he spit you up. He spit you back out because he voted on yourself too many times. And that had the audacity to say, don't come back until you have change. Yo. Yeah. I, I, that's like how, that's like right out the gate. Probably, probably one of my, one of my, one of my favorite lines for sure. Yo, that right there would have had me lit. <laughs> <laughs> that right there alone would have had me lit. So. <laughs> wow. Yo, I'm excited for this. So, oh, man. Oh, that's all that I have for you today. Is there anything else that you wanted to um, let the people know on today? Like how, you know, they can overcome or a little bit more about your poem? Like, this is all you. Um. Yeah, so I, w I will say that um, I will say that in regards to like church hurt and stuff, like a little bit of encouragement. And I will say one, like, and I know people say this all the time. I uh, like, uh, of course, like I'm going to say this, but truly like, like God's real, you know, Jesus is real. You can have a relationship with him. Um, and if you feel like you can't because of something the church did to you, um, like I'm sorry. On behalf of all Christians everywhere, I apologize for that. But there, there is freedom, truly found in in the Lord. Um, and yeah, and not all not all churches are like that. There are there are churches out there that are really really like uh, anointed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think uh, 
my my message would be like whatever you think or you maybe may feel that you you're not worthy enough it's not true like the lord loves you he wants to have a relationship with you yeah yes sir i love it oh man i'm excited about this so if anybody wanted to yeah, if anybody wanted to um, keep connected with you or follow you, how could they do that? Okay, yeah. So uh, my Instagram is S U N N H E E E, Sunny. Um, <laughs> and my YouTube channel is Eric T. So E R I C N T. And I post up my, my content on there. Um, and yeah I, I hope i was thinking about maybe getting like a tiktok or something and start posting like clips Dude. but as for now it's just it's just instagram and youtube yo i'm gonna tell you tiktok it's so easy to like blow up on there so go for it go for it man yeah. <laughs> go for yeah. it um and before we end today could you um close us out with a closing prayer yeah sure Sweet. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you today, and uh, thank you for this conversation, Lord, and um, thank you, um, Lord, just thank you for this day, and uh, Lord, I, I'll pray, I want to pray for the people that maybe have been affected by church hurt, Lord, and I want to pray that they have healing, Lord, and they find you, and they find that they that you love them, Lord, and that there's freedom in whatever they've gone through, Lord, or whatever uh, they've gone through, Lord, and um, Lord, there's freedom from any sin that they're dealing with. Lord, and uh, we just thank you for, the, for this day, and uh, just name prayer, amen. Amen, dude. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of I, course. I really enjoyed it. Dude, it's an honor to finally be talking to you, man. <laughs> yeah, not for sure. Yeah, and uh, thank, dude, last thing, just um, you, you've you always been so supportive of me, and I want to I wanna say thank you. And I, I super, this, this whole, like, uh, this like talk show like podcast type thing that yeah. it's it, it's really cool thank so. you man i really appreciate that yeah. i appreciate it man i'll hit you up later man you have a great day and you as well see ya yeah